Hi guys, this is Mark Piller. Welcome. In this video, I'm talking about real-time messaging, which is a feature we introduced in version 5 of Backendless. And real-time messaging technically is an improvement for the published subscribe messaging system that we've had all along. To remind you, uh, or if you are not familiar with Publish Subscribe, I'm going to give you a quick uh, introduction. Uh, it is a system that consists of three parts. One is a publisher, uh, that is a program that sends a message. Uh, second is the subscriber, it's a program that receives a message. And third is the actual channel that connects publisher and subscriber. Channel is a sort of a logical transport that carries messages between publishers and subscribers. By the way, the same program that is a publisher can also be a subscriber. For example, if you uh, think about a chat application and whenever you send messages, you are a publisher. Whenever someone sends a message, you are a subscriber. So yeah, you can see how it works. And Backendless, in this case, the Backendless servers are essentially the uh, serve the purpose of a broker that uh, manages all the connections and knows how to reroute and deliver the actual messages. So, uh, real-time messaging, as the name suggests, uh, provides a way to deliver published messages uh, to the subscribers in real time. Uh, unlike the way we had it before, where subscribers actually had to poll to receive messages. So you would basically send a, a, an API request to receive any pending messages. Uh, that uh, is no longer the case. You don't, your applications don't need to poll. And with real-time messaging out of the box, it works uh, in real time. So you send a message, you immediately, uh, your subscribers immediately get the messages back. Uh, there are a lot of bells and whistles in this system. Uh, specifically, you can create a subscriber that is a conditional subscriber. You can say, well, I don't need all the messages sent to the channel. I only want the messages that satisfy certain criteria. And then Backendless does all the filtering and uh, delivers those messages that are already filtered. Uh, only uh, the, will include the messages that you have expressed interest for. What can be in the message? Absolutely anything. It can be primitive data, strings, dates, numbers. Uh, it can be complex data types. You could be sending objects. Uh, it could be arrays of objects, arrays of strings. You name it. So it's a, it's a very, very uh, dynamic system that can adapt to different data types. And very similarly to real-time database that I uh, mentioned in one other video, uh, that is a polyglot system where uh, different implementations, different programs written in different languages can use that uh, uh, can use real-time database exactly the same way different programs written in different languages can use real-time messaging. So you could have a JavaScript client sending a, a JavaScript JSON object into a channel. And you could have an Android subscriber that receives that object now converted to a, a Java object. Likewise, it works with uh, collections and arrays and strings, dates, you name it. So all the objects will automatically be transformed, sort of morphed into the, uh, the, the data type that corresponds, uh, that, that is the most natural on the receiving end. Uh, cloud code is also integrated into real-time messaging. There's a bunch of different cloud code events that are being triggered whenever subscribers uh, connect to a channel, whenever a message is being published. So you can create rather complex system that is very dynamic and uh, has central point of execution from the cloud code perspective. Uh, I will introduce, uh, I will show you a demo of, uh, uh, of a chat application that is generated by Backendless. So you can try it out uh, with your backendless application without writing a single line of code you can see exactly how it works to see the real-time messaging in action i created an app in backendless called rt which stands for real time and uh, we'll start with android to do this i will switch to code generation section uh, make sure the android uh, option is selected in the category drop down and you will see the code generator called real-time chat. When you click on it and then click the generate button, a project is generated and downloaded as a zip file. When you unzip it, 
make sure to open with Android Studio. I already have it open right here. And you will see uh, almost identical structure in your application. The name was going to be different. The name of the project will contain the name of your app. Uh, let me run it first and then we'll dig into the code so you can see how to use real-time messaging in your application. So let's run it first. So I will use uh, an emulator so you can see the app on my screen. And now the app is starting. In fact, it already runs. So let's enter uh, a username and let's say I'm, I'm going to be Mark. And once we start chat, we can just start sending messages. Uh, so the message is sent. Uh, you can see that the user Mark has joined and then there is a message hello or let's say hey guys and uh, the message is there. But uh, the usefulness of the chat of course if there are multiple users and uh, if I were to run uh, multiple instances of this app uh, of course all of them would be getting messages. Uh, to make it more interesting I will uh, run exactly the same chat in an implementation in JavaScript, which is also available in Backendless. For this, I will switch to JavaScript. There is a chat app right here. So click on that and click Generate. You'll get a zip file, once again, with a project for the HTML application, uh, HTML slash JavaScript. But also for JavaScript apps, it is automatically deployed into the file section. So you can actually run it right from Backendless without opening up an IDE. And uh, you will see the zip file. This is uh, the zip file for the JavaScript application. I will unzip it. And uh, we're going to get a directory with that application included in there. So you can see all the code is here. Let's copy the uh, URL for index.html. Click on copy to clipboard. And then uh, I will uh, paste it in a browser. And uh, let's run that app. So here, let's say this is going to be Joe. So now we have user Mark and uh, user Joe. Mark is logged in through Android and then user Joe is in uh, the browser. So here if I say hi Joe and send, then you can see that this message showed up in both applications, in JavaScript and in Android. And then if Joe responds hello Mark, then this message uh, shows up in both uh, uh, instances of this app in JavaScript and in Android where Backendless is the broker between these publishers and subscribers. So in this case both uh, instances of the app they serve as both publisher and the subscriber and uh, Backendless is the mediator, is the, the broker between these uh, two clients. So uh, it's, it's, it's very straightforward from the behavior perspective uh, but what's interesting is how it is implemented, how the backendless APIs are taking uh, taken advantage of. Uh, so let's take a look at the Java implementation. We do have uh, an activity called chat room activity. And uh, you can see, for instance, right here, we obtain a channel. Uh, here's the channel object. And then for this channel, we add a join listener. And this listener is invoked anytime a new user joins that specific channel. And in this case, the user would be joining a chat. And uh, the, the, the callback, which is the handle response method, is invoked anytime this, uh, a user joins. And whenever a user joins, we turn around and we publish a message saying that such and such user has joined and that uh, just goes out back to the channel. Another callback that we are registering uh, on the channel object as well is the message listener. So anytime a message is published into the chat, into the channel, uh, this callback is executed and we just basically append the chat message into the messages panel so that message is displayed. Very, very straightforward uh, behavior. Whenever someone types a message and uh, clicks send, we use this backendless.messaging.publish and then we just basically send uh, a message into the channel and uh, in, in the callback there is just a log entry saying that the message has been sent. So you can check it out, you will have exactly the same code if you were to use the code generator so you can play with it and experience it firsthand. Uh, what I'd like to mention is this uh, functionality is real-time 
uh, whenever message is sent there is absolutely no polling that message is delivered to all subscribers who join that specific channel also in back endless console if you switch to messaging the chat channel is used for uh, the chat uh, code generator so if I go back to my emulator and I type in this this is a message to see in console and of course this message is delivered to everyone but uh, in here uh, you can see that in the chat channel there is this uh, message that was delivered to all clients in fact right here here's the message to see in console displayed in uh, my JavaScript application and also is available in the Android app uh, and you can also see it in uh, back on this console in fact right here you can also publish a message to all clients directly from console so let's say this is a message for all subscribers and click publish message and then we get this is a message for all subscribers delivered to the Android and JavaScript application so hopefully you found this useful uh, definitely give it a try this these code generators are available in all backendless apps so you can uh, start playing with real-time messaging right in your app uh, without really writing any code or using the code that is provided to you to develop something interesting uh, where you can use real-time messaging right in your app thank you for watching this video hope you found this useful and stay tuned for more videos